Yeah, yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, you are now tuned in to the unspoken conversation. Yeah. Okay. Okay, 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 I'm back at it like a bad habit, crack at it like a crack addict, I'm a black man with a gift gab and I talk shit so I do brag and I all of my women I ever need, brown body like Hennessy, I am incredibly never really wanna be on the low so I don't be settling, anybody really wanna take a nail, I've been winning, I don't really fail, I don't mention I got your attention, I've been blueprinting on a new level, conversation like unspoken, I was set apart for our chosen, any enemy offending me, I don't really give condolence, I don't really wanna be the nigga not potent, how than a Glock on the Yo, what up, man? Yo. Unspoken. It's your boy, it's one the source. <laughs> what up, man? Knowledge. We just had this conversation, Spider, about when, it, when you transition to music. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I've like, faded out when someone starts talking. I know. I that's, know. How, that's just how it works. <laughs> what up? Oh, yeah. uh, my bad. We got, we got oh, our well, homie. You know, like shit, you know, we had to get on, going on, switch it up. Y'all probably heard that once before, but we was like, man, we've been putting everybody else's music on this damn thing. Let's put some shit we actually paid for on here. Right. And run it up that way. Shout out to Max. And shout out to Max Million, man. If you that listening to this? That was hard. You are now listening to episode 117. We got, it. we got a special guest in the building, but this family, though, in multiple ways, man. Tell the people what's up, my boy. Man, I don't know it, man. Y'all know me. I just be chilling, man. You know, Coolest nigga out. on this side of Mississippi. <laughs> right. Trying to enjoy life. You know what I'm saying? Man, that's his whole model. That's, that's his my mission. boy, 1-5. What's, what's up so with it? it? Coach Allen is what they call him. Yeah. What's, what's your yeah. alias, bro? What they call you, man? Shit, I, I, everything. I, <laughs> I go by Allen, Smith, uh, Smitty, uh, 1-5. Coach Smith, uh, <laughs> Uncle Allen, uh, everybody's favorite uncle, <laughs> Uncle Smitty, you know, Coach, like I say, man. Depend how you doing, know, feel you know Right. Hey, man, man, shout out to you for putting up on us, man. Oh, for sure, man. Right. You know, uh, anytime. Then, you know, shout out to our boy Flim and my boy uh, D Boy. You know, D Boy ain't been in, you know, he been locked in, but he coming, you know, he do. Boy Flem, of course, you know, he... Celebrating his birthday. He had to do what he had to do, so, you yeah, know. Yeah, happy birthday, my guy. Yeah. Happy birthday. You know, we getting older and wiser on this side, you feel me? We done came a long way from episode one, man. I went back and listened a few weeks ago, and I was like, damn, we we, we had a lot of growth <laughs> in between, you feel me? Like, thank God for growth. That's yeah, all I'm man. saying, man. Thank y'all for rocking with us this long, but... uh. We ain't, we wasn't in here last week. We missed some things. It was some things we wanted to touch on, but we was like, we're gonna put it on night until this week. And uh, one of the main things going on right now in this world, you know, we seeing all the back to school footage and stuff. Kids looking all oiled up and and moisturized <laughs> in their new outfits. You feel me? We trying to see who dad is coming through for them with the school shoes. You feel me? You know what I'm saying? And it's it's worse when it's multiple kids with different daddies. You you can see who daddy do the most. <laughs> you know? Uh, yeah. It's kind of fucked yeah. up, man. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Like, why he got on Jordans and he got on goddamn Reeboks. You know what I'm saying? What Where's the gap? But then I always say this, though. First day of school is an exciting time in the kids' world. But it's like Christmas, they come and go. You feel me? Like the excitement of school gone by by the, by, by the time all your fits are gone. So before we get in here, you know, we got an educator in the building when we bought one five, man. Yeah, so we wanted to kind of go to the the expert on first day correspondence. And we get and I wanted to ask y'all, what's a memorable first day back to school for y'all? It can be education. It can be whether you was on the other side of the, of the desk or it can be when you was actually in school. So I'm gonna ask you one five. Mm-hmm. What was a memorable first day of school experience for you? Tell us why. Uh, so my most memorable would probably be high school <clears throat> senior year. So, you know, we got the um, 
84 Camaro. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. I know we, that's what we drove in high school. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So, you know, first day of school, they always have a senior parade. So, yep. I, you know, as I usually do, go pick my partner up. But today, since it's the first day of school, I took the T-tops off. Ooh. Oh, that boy showing that. <laughs> <clears throat> we had a parade. We all met at, like, Jefferson Square or some shit. Um, drove to the school, pulled up. But everybody usually, or they was, uh, just going in a circle around the parking lot. Mm-hmm. Like, out there on the street. Like, we just kept going around and around. Yep. So, I was like, I ain't finna keep following them. I pulled in the parking lot. Me and my partner, we the only one in the parking lot. On the Camaro, sitting on top of the Camaro with the T-tops off. Just pulled up. and they just Yeah, and everybody else just circling. You felt like the man. You, you yeah, know, yeah. You know, yeah, see, yeah. yeah, you feel it like yeah. the man when you walking in there, man. Yeah, yeah. You feel like you didn't figure out every nook and cranny at this school, For man. Sure. Shout, out my, shout out to my dog Julio, man. Hey, yeah, uh, you know, and, and I ain't going to lie. Some, seeing you is the fastest year ever in, in all of your, your, your high school or just school career period because the thing about it, Seeing yeah, you got more freedom than normal outside of school. You get what I'm saying? Like, yeah, for sure. You moving around. You mobile, probably. Yeah. You know, you actually can get into some shit you ain't supposed to get into. You feel me? So it's more of an adventure. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And so, we had open campus too. So yeah. y'all, y'all coming and going. Yeah. Last time. <laughs> Hey, yeah, the yeah. hour and three minute lunches was clutch. That's yeah, all I'm gonna so. say, bro. And then <laughs> like I seen a year, if you was an athlete. We was on block scheduling, so you was done with school, like, after 1230. Like, you played football because you was through, through with football, so, like, the second semester, you only had two, well, a total of four classes the whole semester. Yeah. You was done at noon. Like, basketball, y'all still had to go all the way up to, like, May, all the yeah. way April. But, yeah, yeah we, we, was, we had Dice House to shed, set up. <laughs> now, it was cool See I missed out on that uh, That block schedule Well I didn't miss out We had in my What Sophomore year And then they, they switched And then they changed it Yeah Oh yeah Yeah I wish we would have still had Cause my sophomore year <laughs> That was live Like Yeah Did you ever have an Antoine? Nah so we all we, Like We we practiced We only had Seven period off So we went to all our classes In one day So that gotcha. made the day Go by super fast Okay mm-hmm. yeah. Cause you only in class Like 45 minutes So yeah. by the time She sit down Go over Whatever she gotta go over it's Like the bell ringing Yeah And so But we had an hour and, Like an hour and Eight minute long lunch Cause everybody went to lunch At the same time That's perfect though. Mm-hmm. Because you know All your partners On the same lunch schedule And everything like that By the time My senior year came But I was done with school By like one o'clock though but that's when I start getting into the most shit. Like my freshman year, I don't tell a lot of people this. I had in one my, in my first period class, I had forty one unexcused absences. And like, uh, because you know how when they make you go and get at their tardy, you have to go, you know, get the tardy slip, and after right. the third time, you got to go do morning detention or something. I had FOMO. <laughs> I was suffering from FOMO because you know you wasn't supposed to have a first period class if you was one of the cool kids. <laughs> But I was trying to make up credits because I fucked off my first semester of freshman year, so I'm trying to, like, get back in right. Yeah. But you see everybody in the courtroom slap boxing, niggas grabbing on girls' asses and shit. <laughs> and so you in class, like, man, what the fuck? Like, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And so shit, I was just like, fuck it. You know, it's, it's like school started at 8.05. It's 8.06. Oh, shit, let me just go to the cafeteria. Let me just go ride it out this way. Yeah. I said all that to say, though. My memorable moment, though, was in sixth grade. You know, I still remember the morning of sixth grade when this was my first time riding the school bus to school or whatever. So to go to school, to go from, like, you know, in fifth grade, you sit in that classroom all day. So, you you know, pretty much them 22 kids or whatever, (laughs) this who you rocking with. But when I got went to a big-ass middle school, too, I get there. You know, orientation, you know, you go to orientation, you think you didn't see, you didn't scoped out the side, the, the, the prospects. You yeah. like, it's going to be some. But that's my first time going to school with white people. You know, this is my first time going to school with white people. i never forget this. There was this girl, I'm not going to say her name, but she was fond of me first day of school. We had home room together. And uh, she told me I smelled good. I had my creed on. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Uh, sixth grade. Yeah, sixth grade. You know, I'm I'm stunting. You feel me? You yeah. got you wearing cologne in sixth grade, you off the porch. <laughs> yeah, sure. And uh she just rubbed my head, but my mama had always said, Don't fuck with white girls. 
But you know, when you're a kid, you take everything your mama say is gospel. Yeah. So I was like, oh, my mama said, leave y'all alone. Yeah. And so I told the girl. So she reported me. And I had, like, literally within my first 30 minutes of my middle school career, I was in the principal's office uh-huh. trying to sort through a situation. And I, you know, my word against white girls. Yeah. You feel me? Like, this, like, I hadn't gone to school with white people at, at all in my, my six years of going to school. And my first 30 minutes going, I got a situation. So, you know, I'm kind of shook because I just been watching, sh- you know, a time to kill and all this shit. You know what I'm saying? I'm thinking yeah, yeah. about to kick me out of school and all that. But it was, you know, I found out I had me a white groupie. You feel me? And so then, you know. But but mama said if she can't mama, use your cone. Don't bring her home. Right, so man. I knew I couldn't start off like this. You <laughs> yeah, feel me? Like, yeah. you can't be rubbing on me. But mama said I can't fuck with you. You know what I'm saying? Like, so I just remember that. Because that's when I that was the first time a girl that ever came on to me. Yeah. And that was, you know, she came strong. You feel me? And she came on to find out within that three year career, she was the jump off. She was the one yeah. <laughs> that everybody kinda got their first start with. You feel me? Like uh you know what I mean. Man, you know, and all and it all it always yeah. be that one at the school. I, I yeah. mean, I would have been the first one, you feel me? I would have yeah. jumped it off, you know. <laughs> like Yeah. Like yeah. <laughs> shit. You know, just by being, you know, having the last night start with Jay. We was see I remember it was a sign seat we going there. She's sitting behind me. You know, she's she's like, You smell good. You know, she's like, I'm like, you feel you fucking with it, you fucking with it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And then all shit, all I know, she rubbed the back of my head because I had my ball fade. She talk about my hair look smooth and shit. I'm like, don't be rubbing on me like that, goddamn. But I'm shook. You yeah, feel me? Yeah, I ain't yeah. really like ready for girls yet. And so she, you know, coming on to me like that, you know, I'm like, bro, this how it is. You know what I'm saying? This this how it's about to be. You feel me? You know, I got me a locker. I'm riding the bus. Let me find out. I'm about to get some ass my first day of sixth grade. You feel me? But yeah, that okay. was my memorable sixth grade moment. What was yours? Yeah, a hell man? of a moment. Hell yeah. of a moment, bro. Could have went down, uh, man. Man, I think I had I had a few because like and, and well we went we we changed school every every three every three years you transition to a new school, so like uh, first day of fourth grade and I was I was fresh nigga I had my Cowboys jacket <laughs> with my what school, what school you went to I went to Bel Air we had the uh, big we had yeah, the field yeah, the yeah. biggest field yeah, so yeah, yeah. uh and we was in magnet so people was coming from different neighborhoods. So uh, I was making sure I had mines ready. I heard I was mad I wasn't in the girl. I wasn't in the class with all the chicks, and I tried to get out of the class I was, but my mama wasn't going. So fourth grade was cool. Fourth grade was hard. And then when, <laughs> Why was fourth grade hard, bro? Man, it was just, fourth grade it was, ain't it was, supposed to be hard, man. It was, man. Nah, it, was, it, was, it was hard, man. It was everybody had all linked up from all the uh, east side schools and um, linked up at, at at the school, and then it was just. Shit, I had my um, uh, I had my uh, fade with my curl up top too. Bobby, Man, I was straight. Oh, you had that Al be sure. Yeah, I had the Al be sure. <laughs> I was fresh, <laughs> and I had my starter jacket. I had my starter jacket. It was cool. Hey, no, I ain't gonna Cowboy lie, Cowboy starter jacket. Yeah, yeah. Hey, man, you have to be a different type of nigga to walk around with a starter jacket at older than 14, 15. Because you got to think, when you was a kid, you got to pass. Because you know what I'm saying. But uh, you walk around like I don't know how it was where y'all was from, but in you know in Houston. Niggas got their head knocked off for a goddamn starter jacket. Starter jacket and some goddamn elbows. Like yeah, if you yeah, yeah, if yeah. you was could rock around in them shits, you was different. And and a rope chain. Cause you know them shits hey. used to break with yeah, yeah, yeah. pull up. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like everybody couldn't wear that shit. I ain't fuck with the chains because niggas was stealing. <laughs> <laughs> like, no niggas gonna steal that. Like, <laughs> no, but speaking <laughs> like speaking of like back in the day verse now, like, you know, we was talking about school and uh just seeing the commentary of just how people like like interact with their kids now, you know, and just how kid how advanced kids are these days. You know, you know, one five, I got a question for you. You know, you taught what sis what sis Man, grade? I teach. You no last year you taught Oh, last year I had pre K to eighth grade. That's a that's a wide range, you feel <laughs> Come me? On, man. Like so do you notice a difference in like kids these days compared to like Back in our day, and is it alarming sure. or is it kind of overblown? Do you feel? Uh, I ain't, I'm I'm not gonna say it's alarming, and it's definitely overblown in my opinion. I mean, kids they do some, they kids. Yeah. <laughs> so they do some shit. You know what I'm saying? But me personally, I feel like just thinking about me as a kid. Yeah. Uh, 
See, that's the thing. But I, no, you got. But they got social media. They got the access to social media, the internet. So some of the stuff they doing is like, I can't believe y'all doing that. Right. Because if I was a kid and I would have did that, I'm like, my daddy find out, my mama find out. That's the thing. Most people, like most most parents don't realize, don't really know their kid. Not for sure. Like just think of your experience as a kid growing up. Like, by about the fourth or fifth grade, you started cursing, right? At school amongst your friends, right? Yeah. By about sixth or seventh grade, you had mastered that shit. You got a doctorate in how to put this shit together. You okay, know so I mean? listen, you said sixth or seventh grade, you mastered it, right? Yeah. So when I taught them sixth, seventh, eighth graders last year? Yeah. Man, you would think it's grown people in there talking. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Like, <laughs> but they parent, if they say lie, they get popped in the mouth around the right adult, but they thinking like, damn, damn, you better not talk like that. This motherfucker's a demon outside of your watch. <laughs> you know on, what man. I'm saying? Like, <laughs> like for real, man. Like, I'm telling them kids, and it's so crazy. Like, being at the school, a kid can cuss, send them to the office, they gonna come right back. What do you do with him? Yeah, he was telling me that. He was like, I was like, I was looking at the naming convention of some of his schools. It said some preparatory or uh, this type of preparatory. He like, man, that shit don't matter. Man, he they said, ain't prepping you for <laughs> shit. Man, he said them, them just words. Bro. He, was, he was like, <laughs> man, them kids are the same everywhere, man. Man, I ain't gonna lie. Being a school administration is a thankless job, bro. Uh, I remember I was having to go back and up, uh, back and forth to the school. For my little brothers last year, you know, they were in high school, so I'd be in the office for like 30, 45 minutes waiting on waiting to be seen. So you just observing. Like <laughs> kids talking so crazy to the administration, yeah. but you really can come now because you can't do shit or say shit to a kid without losing your job. No, right. sure. That's so that, and that, they know this. Yeah. Like kids know they leverage now more than we ever did. Because yeah. you gotta think, we didn't have an outcry, we couldn't go live. <laughs> be like, right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, remember what's old girl, uh, the A for for Trump, who uh Kelly Ann Parker, whatever Callaway, uh, the one who daughter uh hated her guts. Yeah, I, and yeah. like she went live, basically saying "fuck my parents." Pretty yep. much, they lied and shit like that. Man, yeah. a, pa- a kid could never even pull some shit like that. You feel mm-hmm. me? Like, and so they know that, and so parenting now is so weird. I I don't have any kids, but I have younger brothers to the point where. Kids think they know so much, but they also have an advantage. Like, kids go away, away from where we are. Right now, like, teenagers use Snapchat. Did you know that? Yeah. I didn't know that. I didn't know high school students use Snapchat because yeah. that ain't where your parents, because the parents are still on on social media, right? Yeah. So what the fuck is the parents on Instagram and Facebook? So we going to go where we supposed to go yeah. over here because we don't like Snapchat in our demographic. Right. Exactly. Yeah. And that shit disappear. What is the one thing you don't need when you in high school trying to hide some shit? Evidence. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? Yep. And I was like, damn, how can I keep up with this shit? <clears throat> and, and so, because kids, the, the youth are always going to be one step ahead when it comes to technology. I, I know some parents, they get a fake account. One lady said she got a fake account <laughs> and put a big booty on that, knowing that her, knowing that her son was going to follow. Sons, yeah. Hey, her son sent her dick photos and shit. <laughs> like, wait, hold up, son. I don't want to know you like this. <laughs> She found out her uh, son a freak. Man. Imagine but if you find out the shit your son into because you want to be a goddamn special agent. You, you feel know what? That, that's a, I don't have any. I don't have any children, but I be thinking like, man, how, how, how can I like breed, bond, or relate to my child? You know, in you know, when it comes to social media and the do's and don'ts and doing that puberty stage, I wouldn't know how to act. I probably wouldn't. Man. I don't know because I can't keep keeping without a phone. <sighs> Yeah, it's but tough. Having brothers and seeing the shit, not only they do, but like the girls do. Yeah. That shit's scary, bro. Yeah. Like yeah. But no, nah, man, so I would I will say working with the kids, like I actually like build a relationship with them to where they actually talk to me. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? They tell me stuff. Um so as long as you like actually like show them that you care about, like you can still like be an adult yeah. with them, but they got to know, like, so, okay, so I teach PE, right? <clears throat> and so last year, 
I'm gonna be honest. By the time middle school came, I wasn't really like trying to teach them a whole lot because they've been sitting in class in a class without windows. Yeah. Wow. In a in a building without windows. When they go to lunch, ain't no windows. And they ain't going outside. They sit in the cafeteria. Yeah, they got to sit in the cafeteria the whole time. So they trying to decompress when they come to you. Come on, man. I, I got a window in the gym, and we in the gym. It's time to play. Yeah. So I wasn't really putting together no lessons, and we finna play this game type stuff. Because then, and they wear uniforms. The girls got on skirts and dress shoes. Yeah. So it's like, am I? do I want to be the PE teacher that's like, when you come in here, you got to have some shoes to get a grade for PE? They going to shut down. You're not gonna, now you're not going to be able to so, get them do anything. Exactly. So what I did was I told them, like, hey, y'all can come in here and do this little warm-up that I'm going to put you to put you through just in case. Yeah. Somebody walk in here, they'll be seeing that y'all <laughs> doing something. Niggas love that shit. Act, we going to act like y'all nah, work. for sure. I got you. <laughs> because I don't want nobody to come in here, like, in the first part of the class, when class just started, yeah. and y'all just in there going crazy. You know what I'm saying? And so when they do come in there and they going crazy, it's like, well, we did this little workout warm up for like 15 minutes. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I did, I, it, they did something. Right. They did something. <laughs> then you going to let them play hack and then roll so, the balls I mean, If you don't believe me, go back and look on the cameras that you look at every time somebody come tell you I did something. <laughs> See, that's, you know, we ain't going to, we ain't going <laughs> to spend too much time, but it's, I just, I'm just going to say this, man. To put a, you don't know your kid. Right. I don't want to put this in your head. If you listening to this and you got a a, a, a child, you don't know your kid. Hey, you I know love what's y'all at kids. home. You know what's at home. You know what I mean? Because the thing about it, a lot of times, parents don't allow their kid to grow up. Yeah. So you shut down the communication so they're not going to let you know anything. When your kid come to Coach <clears throat> Mill PE class, your kid going to get more than a physical education lesson. I'm going to talk to your kids about life and everything, but I'm going to do it in a very respectful way, and your kid is going to love me. See, that's the thing. Once you get that rapport, it's easy. Being the cool kid, kid the cool teacher, you really <clears throat> find out more about that kid than, they people, than the people at home because yeah, sure. kids look for that comfort level. You yeah, know what I'm sure. saying? But I I, uh, I will want to, you know, I did want to transition into, you know, since we were talking about first day of school and just like, what was one bad habit that I always noticed that I did was when it came to the school year and everything like that, I really, I'm, I just like this as a kid, I'm a procrastinator. I'm a procrastinator. So I always said, what's been something that you've seen, and this has nothing to do with school, what's been something that you've seen has been your your downfall. This for this for you, and this for you has been your downfall as far as like it's plagued you and it's changed you since the world has been post COVID. The reason I say that because you were just talking about the kids in a classroom with no no walls. Before that, they was going there at school. I can't go to work. I can't go into an office anymore. Like I I, I don't know how I will function being in an office anymore. We talked about this. What's the one thing that you, you that you bar none that I could never go back to, or the ba- or the habit or the thing that you did on a consistent basis that you could never go back to in this post COVID world? Man, I think you hit it on the nail. I, I mean, thinking like that, uh, my work life balance has to be important. Like, like I'm not, I'm not. I think post COVID, it was all about being to work on time, being the first. Like when I on time, fifteen minutes before. 30 minutes before, be ready, you know what I'm saying, working. And they call it quiet quitting now. Yeah. <laughs> That's what they call it, quiet quitting. I'm giving you exactly eight hours hey. of work, of effort. I was a motivated motherfucker. I'm like you. Yeah, yeah, because yeah, you, I mean, I guess because we come from the same similar backgrounds where they either judge you on your, um, you know, coming from service, if you was on the phones, you know what I'm saying, you had to be sitting there in that, in that chair on time and then. Yeah, that's even, something I'll never do again. <laughs> I forgot that was your career. Like, man, please. Like the thing, I knew the phone. Like my first, my first job out of college was. Be, that's how I met D Boy, working at Chrysler Financial. 
You want to find out who the people do not give a fuck about? It's the person calling them about their car note. Because <laughs> the car note, the last thing you really going to pay. Like, it's as long as this shit, I don't get a 30-day late. So on a 28-day, I'm going to pay you, nigga. But you got to call them every day. They two days past due. Who you know pay their car note two days past Exactly. Due? You get what I'm saying? So I know I'm about to get cussed out when I call. And I'm inconveniencing you because you, but I'm like, you ain't got to answer the phone. I used to hope they didn't answer the phone. No, nah, for real. I got fired because I was doing the ghost calling. You know, when well, you calling, hey, cup. It was like, I didn't know they was tracking that shit. Like, that's how I got fired. And then, so they bring you in the room. And it was like, man, yeah, they do it so embarrassing too, man. Three seconds, it was like, you didn't let it ring. It was like, why would I? Well, uh, it went to what? Well, it seems as though. The next person that, that got him in the in the neck had no issues getting in contact with him. Yeah. Was like, I didn't want to. I pretty much. I, I wanted to. I just didn't want to talk to him. I, mean, I got cussed out the lad yesterday after I talked to him. Like, I, he, you kind of when you in a queue, you know who your problematic people is. They put like, and they stinging it to you too. They, they keep giving you the same goddamn yep. niggas. Like, and I got a distinct voice, so. Imagine the nigga cussing you out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you call him the next day the same time, hey, man. Hey. And you gotta just go through the script, but you really, hey, bro, I don't want no issues, man. I, I'm just trying to do my job. Like, I really wish I could just have that come over, and like, bro, man, just just play along, bro. Just <laughs> just pick up and be like, nah, you ain't got it. Set up some arrangements, and we just go go from there, man. That's that's how I really wish that. Because if you allowed me to freestyle, I could have got you your arrangement. Because you know they just want you to lock in a date. Yep, that you gonna pay this date. Hey, man, where you get paid, bro? What, what, you know what? What can you do? You know you gotta talk to him like a human, but yeah. they don't allow you in the script. It'd be like, can you pay? They'd be like, hey, sir, you a past due seventeen days. Uh, do you want to make a payment for the past due amount? If I if I wanted to make a payment for the past due amount, you would think I would have paid that uh, shit? Uh, a, pay, <laughs> like, a payment arrangement. <laughs> yeah. So it's like, let me get a payment arrangement. As long as I get a payment arrangement, they get out the queue. Imagine doing this for a reverse mortgage company. Oh, yeah, you really ain't getting your money. <laughs> <laughs> you talking about getting cussed out. Bro, that's what I do. I can't walk. I can't talk on the phone. That was my one and last job talking on the phone. Man, I, it, let me tell you about, like, <laughs> we can go on, but it's funny because I came down here for Arkansas, and that was my first job thinking I got something. And you, and you that's the thing. The way they put, <laughs> paint it to you that first day, man, like, you, the I, bonus structure, if you... Man, they're going to lay it out. <laughs> I'm, about, I'm, I'm talking about if you would have saw me in my little optimal, my clothes packed up, I'm talking about I'm, I'm on my way down to Dallas, you man. You walking in so optimistic, man. bro. <laughs> Well, then you might see a few chicks in there too. Like, ah, okay. bro, I, I, I get through training. You know, they I get through training. Like, yeah, it's just this. Then they put me on the phones, and then it was kind of cool. Then one day the lady was like, "Hey, you need to turn around and uh, add more calls." I had the bubble guts. This day I had the bubble guts. I normally got the bubble guts in the daytime. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> man, bro, I would. <laughs> I went to the bathroom and I stayed for about an hour and a half. Man, I felt uncomfortable because I couldn't take a shower. Wait, I had to make sure I was super, How, super how you clean. walk back? Because you in the call center. Oh, uh, uh, yeah, I walked. You realize you been gone. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you don't know. Like, exactly. You nasty-ass <laughs> nigga. Like, that ain't his lunchtime. Man, that, he been gone too long. <laughs> yep, you right. I had been gone through lunches and everything. <laughs> yeah. Man, I get back. They trying to micro. Hey, you need to catch up on your calls and this and this. Man. Man, that's when I knew I had That's when I knew I had the motor. I had to get on my my hustle. Yeah. Once they start talking about numbers, I don't do well with numbers. Like, once <laughs> you put, like, expectations over me, talking about you got to get to this number, and I kind of fold. You know what I'm saying? Because yeah. I, I need to work at my own pace. That's when I knew. Like, I had to finesse my goddamn resume, and I started finessing my resume at that point. I'm like, I, gotta, I, gotta, I, gotta, I got something got to shake. And I knew I couldn't do that no more. <laughs> With my supervisor made me bring an obituary. Somebody <laughs> passed away. Uh, man, what are we doing, bro? Like this hey, probation listen, or work? I don't even. I, don't, I, I try not to call women bitches. And I want to call her a bitch that day. I swear I did. You, and you know how hard it is to get an obituary at a funeral. It is. Cause they only gonna make a limited amount, bro. Like you know how hard it is to get an obituary, bro. Yeah. Like I ain't gonna lie, dog. You remember I went to jail, right? That that one time. Yeah. So this is when it, it benefited me to have a call center type boss, cause he was a black nigga, you know. Yeah. And so he understood. He was like, whatever you do, you know, get up, just get through that shit. Your job good. But I've seen situations like 
I I'd seen them walk a girl out of there boohoo crying, slanging snot, cause she had just a, a kid been fucking up in school, so she kept having a. Well, I gotta go up to the schoolhouse, bro. And it is like, damn, cause I was that badass kid. You yeah. know? <laughs> like so like imagine. So I'm like, damn, you looking at it, you know what they get like they walking out of there for. And like, damn, can you imagine the ass whooping the kid about to get in there, bro? Bro. Because not only are you fucking up, now now we impacted cause I gotta come and see about your shit. I, I know he got a biblical ass whooping that night, but uh that's when I knew. I'm like, yeah, I can't let these motherfuckers have this. Because I like to skip work sometimes. That's why working remote is the perfect thing for me. My employee here this shit, I'm probably fired. But goddamn it, <laughs> I, I give y'all four hours tops a day of actual promote of, of actual work. Because I've realized working remote that we don't need eight hours. I can get done what I need to get done within four to five hours. If I did too long, then I'm on overtime. Yeah. If I give you eight hours, that's overtime. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So... That was my thing I can never go back to is putting on some goddamn pants to go to work again. Yeah, I and if and if I don't see yeah, I don't I don't see how I, I think I think the people the one that stands. Because there's so many people who who yarn for it because they used to didn't give it before before post COVID. Like even working remote on the phones at home, they wouldn't even give that. And then all of a sudden they came up with a a strategy to do it. I don't I don't see a lot of companies being sustainable trying to force their employees back to work to the regular uh, cycle. And even look at it, they re- I understand why they want to do it. They was getting a lot of money out of employees. They had a fitness center. They had a cafeteria. Yeah, sure. No, so, Cap- Capital One, they they they, uh, they finessed the fuck out of us. I mean, they, they got at least 150 a, how they a get month. You. This is how they get you. They, it, they do it like a recruiting visit that first day. Yep. Like, when you get your job off and you come for your orientation, they walk you around the campus yeah, and sure. shit. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah. This is what you can do with yoga. So you seeing yeah. all these goddamn people doing yoga and shit. But you got to understand, like, these motherfuckers with high-paying jobs. So they got breaks and stuff. But then they tell you, like, oh, yeah, you can set your schedule for workout schedule and no one can impede on or meet with you during that time. Like, that was real, you know, and everything like that. But then you start realizing these motherfuckers ain't paying you shit. Like, yeah. I literally, but, you know, they allowed you to hoop. Some people, they like that shit. Like, I, it was one dude. I ain't going to say his name. If d Ball was here, he know who it was. <laughs> that ball here, dude? Man, you ain't got to say his name, bro. <laughs> uh, nigga love hooping, bro. No, so, I just hey, know, listen, know, he was there before I was, but he was every day. You, you every know, day. You know, hooping is life for some people. You know what I'm saying? Some Definitely. niggas can't give up that rock. You fool, so no matter what age that boy, this boy about thirty seven, making about sixteen an hour. Listen, he me? never get fired. He never got fired, but he had the opportunity to go somewhere and make about twelve dollars more. <laughs> but they ain't had no basketball court, so he could cover hoop two, three times a week. You feel me? Because he was coming in there full get up practice gear. You know the shorts matching his top. You feel me? Like he was, you know, and hey, he, t- he turned down the job. Tear down a job because they ain't had no goddamn work. Got we 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 all disowned this nigga. We was like, bro, wait, and you gonna make twelve? Nigga make twelve? That was damn near double what you making, bro. That bit, that's how I know you ain't got a woman in your life. Because <laughs> <laughs> like, you gotta, can you imagine explaining that to the woman in your life, bro? Like, yeah, nah. Hoop dreams. <laughs> you feel me? Like, yeah. I, I'm the coldest nigga on the call to the flow. I can't get that up. Like, come on, man! But you know who it is, yeah. Who he? He the first. Anytime we was hooping, he the first one that getting up shots. And see, they and, get you, know, you on that food too, though. Yeah, they, they, they get got you the like food, you, when you look at your check, everything. You like, oh, you know, I'm just gonna get something in the cab, <coughs> and, then you, sure. and then you get something in the morning, you get something at lunch. That's about twenty five dollars. Then you do that like five times a day. You do the math. You do that by at least ten times a month. Man. You do that. Do the math. You know what I'm man, saying? Man, these calls in the places like shit. But yeah, so <clears throat> hey man, it was good though. You know, you, it was a stepping stone. It was like being in college, you know, working at a call center. I tell you, I'd rather give it to my people than them killing chickens. Like huh? I, I'd rather give it to the people that's killing chickens around here at them at them factories. I huh? give, I, I'd rather teach them that role, to give them that type of job, than them killing chickens like at Tyson. Back at home, them the only jobs they got. Oh, oh, sorry, yeah, shit. Sorry. Nah, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> I was like, sorry. wait, what? My bad, my bad. <laughs> context, context. My bad, my bad. <laughs> like, no, nah, but uh, 
Man, dog, you know, we had we missed some shit last year, last week. And there's certain things that we feel as though, like, you just not supposed to do. You know, it's been a lot of TV going on. You know, uh, some people been split. And I, I've noticed something about black cinema and black shows, you know, after they have first season success. And uh, they try to, I, you know, I feel like they try to do too much that second season and it starts becoming like outlandish. I feel like, I feel like they got to outdo the first season. Yeah, it's like, why y'all, what, why the fuck you we doing this? So I know knowledge, you wanted to kind of chop it up, you no, know. No, but you made a good point. And I, I see that a lot. And it's because of, I think I I think it's because of how maybe they deal be so unknown still. You know, black cinema deals be so unknown. So they try to like do the the most in order to be able to like get, get to that next level. Get the level. guarantees for this, you know, the plus season. Cuz like one show that I, you know, other people had their reasons for why they disliked it, but I, I I like once I start a show unless it's just terribly bad, bad I'm going to finish it just to see how it wrap up. Yeah. So like P Valley this season you know, a lot of people, you know, were upset about, you know, what they saw in the optics and shit like that. But, you know, that's neither here nor there. But I know you wanted to kind of discuss, you know, your viewpoint. You feel yeah. as though they had a successful season. I do, because as you <clears throat> mentioned, I think that they they did push it to the limits or to the extreme in certain areas. Of course, we can talk about the relationship between Uncle Clifford and Lil Murder and his other homeboy. Uh, but you can also see how they Good actually. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm yeah. Going, bro. But you also can see like one thing that caught my eye was in these small towns, <coughs> politics are really manipulative it, to the worst. Like you can have somebody that's a strong candidate that really, really has structure, and then you can have someone that really, really just a a a, a just just a nobody. But what was just, your highlight of P Valley? Like what? What was it about P Valley that you and that you enjoy? So the reason I say that because what I enjoyed about it, like uh, what, like from your biggest thing, what was the what you took out of the second season? Like what what you compared? If you compared it to the first season, what do you feel like the arc um, was going up? Or I don't think I don't think it was a I don't think it was a strong lead character, but the closest one that really shined was probably Lil Murder. He was that is diversity. Okay, like, like his diversity was. Um, was 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 enough to get him a BET award or, or not a BET award but a BET mention. All right, I I feel as though he got to get something. If you do it yeah. all, if you if you got a thing, you know what I'm and saying. He's supposed to be married, like you know. What <laughs> if I'm saying? you taking these career risks, I, this is almost <laughs> in line with when Fifty Cent lost all that weight. Yeah, remember he dabbed to die, <laughs> like try to do that role that we he thought he was about to win the Academy Award for. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, that shit didn't even make it to the field. <laughs> like that's what I kind of feel like with with murder. Like if you don't win somebody, this shit, bro, you just what did you do this for? Like, yeah. like <laughs> because yeah. how bad? I guess it's the answer. How bad do you want to be famous? That's that's the question. Because exactly. you know what I'm saying. Like some people have different levels they're willing to go to. You know, and it, you know, and I'm not here to judge anybody. I think what makes people uncomfortable. And I don't know why, because it's 2022. I feel as though if you still getting uncomfortable about that shit, then you got something that you got to deal with on your own, you know, because yeah, they're trying to normalize, you know, sex outside of just the the hetero manner. And I understand, it, you I know. I think at this point it's normal. So that's why I don't yeah. understand why it still gets people up in the arms about it to where they, they can't go move forward with it because it's, Bro, if you still offended by gay things in front of you, then I don't know what to tell you, bro. Like, yeah. because that's damn near like breathing now. You know, it's going to be a gay character. It's going to be some type of, you know, homosexual scenes or, or, or natures in it. If it's a, a, in most shows, if you can't get past that, then this world not 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 going not, to not gonna be geared towards you. But um, I guess the thing that, that my issue with a lot of black cinema and black shows is when they try to convey the 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 storyline outside of the norm, like where they try to push the envelope with their their, their um uh, with their 
how they, you know, as far as the possibilities, whether they try to be black magic or whether, you know, a spiritual a- aspect like Lovecraft mm-hmm. Country. Yeah, I was about to say, like Lovecraft Country. Lovecraft Country did it in an exceptional way because they didn't try to cut corners when it came to production and try to convey the storyline. What I get upset about is it doesn't even fit in some shows. Like on P-Valley, when they tried to make Diamond a security guard like a witch doctor. You know what I'm saying? Like, uh, what did this come from from first season when he was whooping niggas' asses and shit mm-hmm. to now he a witch doctor that play with crystals and he see visuals and shit of the future? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, how we get here? You know, and mm-hmm. or, and I see that a lot because it's like, oh, they trying to push the envelope because you didn't got a little bit more money in the budget, so you feel like you got to do something corny to convey it. But a lot of people don't understand that less is more with, with black audiences, but they don't think it is. They yeah. think we want to see the bells and whistles, like in Power. It's so many, like, I didn't realize we've never seen Power celebrate a, a holiday. It's never been a summer show. Like Tyree said that. You know they've never filmed in the summer? Now, now that you say that. In eight seasons, yeah. these niggas never did this, a summer show, never yeah, went on a this, vacation. This thinking about it, yeah. It's like, bro, y'all really like didn't give us an experience in this big <laughs> city of New York. Because right. think of Sex in the City and shows like that, or The Shy, even The Shy, you see different elements in different time yeah. periods because yeah. different time periods bring different energy. They you know, did two, what, two different holidays back to back, didn't they? Yeah, good, good call. <laughs> I was talking about that. Uh, I was talking about that today. But yeah, you're back to power. I always I voice my um, thoughts on that, that for it to be so dynamic and so um, liked in the crowd, the scenes was like the club, the house, well, tummy house, penthouse. That was it. It show you how limited that budget was. <laughs> like, we didn't realize that they really blew most of that bitch on costume. I, on wardrobe. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, like <laughs> They were fresh. Ty- Tyreek used to be... I'm like, ghost. this is what y'all could have got some some Zara and game. What's going on the production side? But y'all would have put this nigga in, yeah. in Dolce Cabana and Dior and shit. <laughs> and that, now y'all want to fucking give us three locations. You get what I'm saying? Like, the nigga is just walk around New York City with no whip. He be going to pick up his sister. Where is he going? Sure. Where is he taking her? So he said that that one time when he got dropped off, like... <laughs> I gotta get a car. Like, <laughs> yeah, like we need a car. Yeah, that's what everybody realized. Like, damn, Tyreek really been moving around without a car the whole time. But this but, nigga got like but he get everywhere he need to go. He wearing ten thousand dollar fits. Come on, man. You feel me? Like this right. shit don't make sense, bro. Like you get what I'm saying? And so, I think that's why we be asking questions. We like, what the fuck did they? They didn't think this through. Cause you know what happened back in the day when everybody looked like they were downtrodden and just poor. But in the back in the eighties and seventies and eighties, like good times. But then they tried to transition to like where everybody was like a businessman and everybody yeah. wore suits to work. Yeah. Like, yeah. but it's like all the people wore these guys. First of all, like I it used to annoy me that dudes used to go to work on these shows in like eight button suits, <laughs> like the Steve Harvey suit that yeah. you only wear yeah. to like when it's a comedy show or no, some shit. Sure. Niggas don't wear that shit to work. Man, did you know all into this time I thought living single was they was broke. No, them niggas was rich, bro. <laughs> like, you not living in that goddamn brownstone in New York City. Bruh. I don't yeah, give a right. fuck how many roommates is. You niggas paid. And then yeah. Overton and, 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 uh, and Kyle really was paid because it was just two of them. <laughs> yeah. You get what I'm saying? <laughs> it's four of them in this house. It's three of them in this house. It's two. So these niggas got a little bit more bread. They stay in a, in a higher apartment. They upstairs. Yeah. You feel me? Like, yeah. I used to think about this. And I'm like, how the fuck they affording this? You know, like, when I watch Boomerang. I ain't know what the fuck this nigga did. <laughs> I just know this nigga was fly as fuck going to work every day. Every day. Had the fly ass apartment. Come on, man. Fucking all the fly ass hey, chicks. Y'all never caught this in Boomerang. <laughs> he had the first uh on uh, Wild Mount TV. Go back and watch it. No cap. No <laughs> cap. Go back and watch it. He, he was he was sitting the there. The first Wild Mount TV. TV. Bro, I, I I still to this day don't believe like that shit was a real apartment, bro. It's no way niggas was really living like that back in the day without selling dope. Because it's like in the eighties, what in the early nineties, but what was you doing? Like when old boy on on, on Soul Food told a uh, told uh a bird uh husband, you know. I started out like, but now I make $85,000 a year. I mean, that shit right really ain't shit. Like, man. I, like, like, when you start thinking about this it's, shit, man, it's stretch out a little better, then. It's, it's, 
stretched, it's stretched out, but this nigga buying diamond braces and shit. Yeah, that's the yeah, guy thing. Yeah. Talk about what you need. You need a loan. I'm like, man, you just, <laughs> nigga, you big money went for 85 grand, bro. That's what I'm like. What was y'all niggas making back in the day? Like, yeah. <laughs> the cost of living. I don't know. I just be watching shit as an adult and I be thinking different. I be like, man, like, married with children. How the fuck this nigga got a two story house <laughs> and he's selling shoes? <laughs> That's all he did was sell shoes. Wife ain't even work. Nigga, wife kept <laughs> woman. Bro, yeah, she uh, walk around, nails done, hair done every hell of, day. Hell of a shoe store. Hell of a shoe store. Had to be. I'm like, what is you selling up in this bitch? <laughs> like, you gotta think, bro. Like, hell of a shoe store, dog. <laughs> No lie. Hell of, hell of a commission. Bro. <laughs> like, bro, I'm, like, I ask questions now. You know what I'm saying? Like, His commission structure is amazing. Bro, I, 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 show, I sold shoes at dealers, man. I thought about it. <laughs> I realized, like, this ain't no money. I got to go back to sales. Uh-uh. That's what I'm saying, dog. Nah. That's why I signed you on Facebook. Like, uh, a man made got a house like this. Because now, you know, women be like, I want to be an at-home mom and shit. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, y'all need dope dealers. You get what I'm yeah. saying? <laughs> like... <laughs> Two pair, two income households is the way to go right now. You see? Like, <laughs> right. If we, if you ain't scamming, or uh, if your ass ain't the goddamn, you ball know, player. ball player, some shit, bro, we got to work. We gonna have to, you <laughs> gonna, gonna, gonna have to carry some weight around this motherfucker. Like, that's man. how I look at it, man. So you, so you fifty fifty. I ain't fifty fifty. You know, I, I, you know, I just need to know something coming. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, you gotta say it ain't gonna be if all of it. Happened to me. You feel me? Yeah, we could, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, I just need to know you can go and earn. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. Because you gotta think. Yeah, you get up here and get something out of it. I'll blow my back out. What are we supposed to do? Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. I just yeah, think I of stuff like that. Some, uh, That's when you when you grow up poor, you think of the struggle. You think of like what could have. You maybe know, do some long term disability insurance. Man, something. that shit ain't gonna go. That shit eighty percent of your income. That you know, <laughs> that that's going into her upkeep budget. You feel me? That yeah. twenty percent the upkeep budget. No, you know, man. waxing, getting your eyebrows threaded, getting your hair rebraided, nails, so facials, chiropractic. That's a good question. How much? What do you think you should pay on? Pay pay towards your your significant other while you're in a relationship. So me personally, I believe in paying all like households. I'm gonna pay the mortgage, pay the big bills. Like you handle the food. It's giving me like the groceries because groceries high as hell, bro. No, that shit sure. add up, man. You know, uh, stuff like. The maintenance as far as you know the cleaning lady. What about I, what about her grooming? Anything her grooming you supposed to take care of? I mean, the thing about it, I don't have to because I've taken that 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 financial burden off her of having to do for the household. So it's like your money is pretty much yours. Yeah, I feel you know the same. I, I, facts, facts. I feel the same way. Because as long as I'm allowing you to be able to live and within your luxuries and not have to like inconvenience yourself. I feel as though that's a good thing because I'm taking care of everything here, you know. So you saving up, you really you, like being. You, you able should to, have some nail money. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? <laughs> and so now it's like I feel as though y'all need to understand that that's one of the biggest things in relationships. Is, is some of them ain't trying to hear. It. Some of them ain't trying to hear that. I mean, a lot of people, a lot, a lot of women being raised by social media. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, and I ain't saying that's a bad thing because a lot of dudes being raised in the same manner is like we not being realistically uh, having yeah, like them kids too. They raised <laughs> off social media. It's like because you don't understand. Some people don't understand the concept of finances. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, some people will be like, "Why can't we do this?" Even though you make enough to do this. No, I'm trying to get to the point where we got enough reserved, so we can live. So let's live broke for a little while. Let's stack this shit up so that way we ain't thinking about when we swiping. I hate living on a budget. Yeah. It's not realistic to not live on a budget, but I hate, like, damn, I got to think about this. So I don't like to be in that point. So I like to get enough coverage and enough goddamn room. So I don't want to live check to check. A lot of women, though, want to go on three to four, week, you know, date nights. But the thing about it, it's hard because you don't know who they were dating before you. Even from a man's perspective. Like, yep. some women don't. Don't believe in like being a you know of service like that to a, a, a you know a, a a man like making his plate and everything like that. They don't get anything out of that, you know. But some women they love the idea of being able to take care of their man. Yeah. So what happens when you go from one extreme to the next? That happens a lot because so many people have different approaches to to dating, and you know a woman that. Didn't like you gotta think, what if she just got out of a relationship with a guy who didn't let her take out her card at all? 
And so now you get back into the real world. It's like <laughs> that was a goddamn big fish. You get what I'm saying? Like that yeah, was a big fish. Yeah. You that was a snapper. That was a red snapper. Now you coming back to the catfish. You feel me? Like <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like I'm the type of person I'm not gonna make you do it. I never ask you to take your thing out. Just offering. Get you far with me. That make me want to want to go further with it. You feel me? So it's like I'm not um, I'm not I'm I'm not unrealistic with my expectations financially though. You think more? You think it's you think it's more women that think like what you said 50, 50, 70, You know, fifty fifty is a, is a bad not, word. Not way fifty fifty. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but like more of a, a partnership rather than you know you the majority uh, stakeholder of doing everything. Do you think it's more women out there because social media? What you think? You you date you outside. You single. <laughs> you you the single one. What you think? So what's the question again? Like, if you was in a relationship, what are your expectations on um on um spending as a as as in a relationship or on your female? Basically, yeah. Do you have a hard expectation like going if you were to go into dating right now? Like, what it would be financial breakdown? Uh, no, I don't really have no expectation. To be, I mean, to be honest with you, um, when we go out, I'm probably going to pay for it. Um, and if I got it, you know, whatever I got, I'm, I'm going to take care of most of the stuff. But you not, you think about it, I feel like you're a reasonable person. You're not going to go above and beyond your means. No, no. That's sure. what dudes get themselves checked. <clears throat> okay, so right. I'm not one of them, uh, I'm finna go buy you these all this designer stuff type guy. No, I'm not doing that. <laughs> yeah. Do you know? Do you know how to communicate that you're not doing it? That's the problem with getting a lot of yeah, people. Yeah, that's up. a good question. Do quiz. you know how to like, communicate that you're not doing it? Yeah, I will just tell you kind of like I just said. <laughs> 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 you're a real one, but that's what a lot of dudes end up biting off more than they can chew because yeah. they get into a situation and they too far gone. It's like some dudes really be they be thirsty for that that kill. Like that, yeah. you know, you chasing a chick that you know outside of your lane. Yeah, 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 yeah. And so the thing about it is like, cause some dudes, they they pour them their self value into the woman that they have sex with or the woman that they interact with. So if you know she one of them ones that fuck with you know niggas with bread and you ain't got it like that, you gonna get yourself into a funny financial situation just for a couple nights with her. Nah, you know what I'm, I'm saying? Yep. Cause you ain't going on no hundred dollar dates with a chick who used to go on to Philippe's. You know what I mean? And I see that a lot where dudes try to live the playboy lifestyle, but that costs. It costs to court women. You get yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah, for sure. That's why women have options. Because the thing is, may the best man win. Especially one of them women who got they got their shit together. Because most of the time women that got their shit together, that's why a nigga can't come doing the minimal these days because a lot of women they they doing what so well right now. I don't need a nigga to struggle with. Yeah. So what am I add on a, a liability for for some dick when yeah, I can get sure. some dick when I need? That's how yeah. they looking at it. So the value of a man is like a running back now in the NFL draft. You know, like NFL like running back used to go top five back yeah. in the eighties and nineties. Now them niggas can run for two thousand yards to no, we, be a second, third, the, round third round pick. I can wait on that. Yeah. <laughs> you feel me? Like I can get that later on. Yeah. And so that's really how you have to approach it. Your leverage ain't really there to be the nigga who like I'm gonna be tight with this, but my expectations are for you to do this. That's why they get offended when we say cook clean and shit. It's like nigga, I make more than you. I pay for somebody to come do this shit. You get what I'm saying? But. I'm not about to be the one doing the shit because the the the, the elements have changed. Some dudes don't know how to change that because your daddy didn't gas you up. It's like you remember when Nipsey had that conversation about old gang members leading the new gang members, but the technologies have changed, so they putting you on blind missions. Well, basically, like when they was doing their drills, it wasn't it wasn't satellites, you know, yeah. checking checking your phones. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, so yeah. they don't know how to tell you to look out for that. So your dad who. Married your mom who never had a job of real substance, yeah. never had to worry about going there and make her own money. Mm -hmm. He could handle your mama a lot different than you can handle a woman making six figures. Yeah, not nah, for sure. But he only told you how to handle a woman, but he only knows this one situation. Oh, hey, got, on that note, I got a shout out to my pops because we talking about that. My pops, he go outside, do all the yard work, he'll come in the house, and he'll uh, clean the house. 
Not saying that my mama didn't clean the house. But he don't believe but, in roles. He don't leave, believe in gender roles. Yeah, he gonna come in the house. He gonna clean. He gonna wash clothes. Like, he gonna do all that stuff. And that moved on, even, you know, even though I ain't want to do it then. But, you know, eventually, I can't be with no woman if you don't want to clean up. That means you nasty. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That, you, that, don't, you, that hit you different when you walk into a chick house and it's dirty. That hit way it, different. Yeah, if, if you complaining about cleaning up, like, come on, man. <laughs> you you been you you been in the tub. You see all this dirt in the tub. <laughs> <laughs> Clean that up, man. <laughs> nah, like I yeah. go like bathroom checks is big with me when I go over a chick house the first time. Cause the bedroom they don't really tell you nothing. You feel me? Yeah. The bathroom is where you can find Hopefully that. You tried to straighten that up. A you know what I'm yeah. saying? Yeah. But you know the bathroom is where shit get real. And I could find out if you been like I literally went over a chick house. She ain't had no kids. So, you know, she, I, you know, I made sure she don't live with nobody when we were talking. Why the fuck you got pee stains all up around this motherfucker? <laughs> like, how many niggas been up in this bitch? Like, at least clean the pee wow, stains. Yeah, if you're the like, toilet dirty, you, you gonna, gonna be fucking multiple niggas. Bowl. Clean up after the, the last one, you get what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, that's like me having a chick come over and I got, I know you wear a short dude and I got long goddamn weave strands on my goddamn, <laughs> yeah. you know what yeah, I'm saying? Thomas, like, yeah. nigga, I know I got competition just by seeing the shit right here on the, on the goddamn toilet. Yeah. Like, nigga, you know, and so that was one of them ones where it's like, you've you been categorized. Sink yeah. got hair all over it. And, like, so I don't have crazy expectations. Like, I can cook. I don't mind cleaning. I don't believe in explicit gender roles. Yeah. Yeah. Mine is more based on for effort in anything. Level like of effort. Filling in the gaps for each other. Yeah. It's like, oh, shit, I know he cooked and da da so let me make sure everything, you know, good. I'm going to clean up or yeah. vice versa. Right. Teamwork. Make right. the dream work. And so, because the thing about it, you're not about to just be sitting there like, baby, put this up for me. Baby, come bring me a soda when you come. Baby, bring me. And this motherfucker didn't work and made more money than you today. But it's chicks, like you said, they're going to be like, well, I want to go through that struck. <laughs> I don't got to go through none of this. Like, you got to think a lot of women ain't grew up with a dad in the household nowadays. Yeah, so it's like, they right. ain't like, what the fuck? I ain't about to have no nigga walking around here thinking he run shit because they ain't see it. Yeah. And then they, they didn't see a man do it and really held shit down either. How many women actually saw that for, that, for our generation, unfortunately? So it's like they don't see a dude who got it. So they don't know how to let a dude have it. Yeah, so man. now it's like, shit, I have to go and get it on my own. And so now you have a whole generation of women who are hustlers. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Who got yeah. more hustle than the men yeah. because they understand how to use what they had. Yeah. And so now a lot of men have this. That's why these men have so much this, you know, like disrespect for a lot of women. Like I like watching reality TV with a woman and just seeing the observations of the men that are conveyed on TV makes you realize why com why Twitter and comments go so hard at back and forth. Because like I literally was I was watching um Sweet Life with my girl. It was a nigga on here on there. He been with his girl for five years. They moved in together. They've been living together for five years. He told her to get off birth control, but he ain't married her. So, you know, she went out with her homegirls and shit, and they having conversations about, like, you know, what we get, you know, I told them, you know, we getting, you know, they getting engaged and stuff, and they seeing, they, they, she seeing relationships that are actually moving at a real pace. And so, she, you know, she go back and ask her, nigga, it was like, so shit, um, I don't think, I, I don't think I want to be off of birth control without, like, the promise of a ring or something. Just like, Cause you telling me to go burger troll, but it's like, so what, are you ready for marriage? And he was like, I ain't ready for that yet. You know, um, you know, we got stuff that we need to fix in our relationship. I'm on my, I'm on my time and I'm on God's time. I ain't about to be listening. Oh wait, I'm like, hold up, time out, bro. So you mean to tell me if she get pregnant, you cool with that? Like you cool with bringing a whole goddamn human being in this motherfucking world? But the marriage is the deal breaker. Like, I was like, oh, shit. Can you imagine a nigga fucking on you, wanting you to carry his seed that won't marry you? No, I cannot imagine that. <laughs> no, but, but I'm talking about as a woman, like, as a woman. <laughs> you know what? And so if you had this experience and then you hear a nigga talking shit fly on goddamn Twitter or some shit. Sad but true, but the most women that don't accept that, 
does does have that father fi- figure in their life. Exactly. But the thing about it, that's but yeah. how many women we we grew up in a household where it was thirty four percent people that grew up in single parent households. Yeah. I mean that's that grew up in uh, two parent households. Yeah. So the other sixty six percent. Yep. What did that look like? Yeah. yeah. And so that's what that's why. I feel as though that's so much com- of the combativeness because we don't know how to deal with each other because we never really saw the interaction, you know? And so you kind of, like, you can't look at TV and how shit used to go and try to apply that to nine days. Yeah. That's just like the Bible back in the day don't apply to what it was now. You know what I'm saying? And so that's just my little two cents. I just was <laughs> going be like, bro, we really got to do better, man. Like, I've I've been... A real fuck boy. Damn. I've been a real fuck boy. But it's like certain shit. It's like a certain decorum. It's like I know when I've did, gone too far. Some yeah. niggas don't know when they went too far, though, bro. You get yeah. what I'm saying? It's like yeah. I'm going ta- to stress you out and take you as far as you allow me to take you. Why the fuck you got to use them? Yeah, I think that it, I think, you know, what that is that is disheartening like, to see me and damaged women. When they know and they they gotta they know it's like what's that quote of when you know you won the war or when you know you don't won the battle uh, or when you want why not when you want, know you won the war why keep continuing the battle yeah or it's like because like they want to break it down like a lot of dudes want to break down especially a woman that has her that's of substance and they got her shit together that's a check that's like a it's like a challenge now. Mm. And like most men, we like to chase him, like the challenge. We was like, I want to break down this alpha woman and make her have all trust in me. And like, nah, bro. I don't know. It's just, I had to go on this tangent because I saw so much fuckboy shit on TV the last week. And it's like you see it in several shows. Damn, what you been watching? Sweet Life, Love and Marriage, uh, Huntsville. <laughs> Uh, goddamn, the manipulation is real, bro. Like yeah. some niggas can manipulate. I'm like, God damn, bro, we ain't shit. Cause when you see it on film, like you don't know how it is the rest of the time. But when you see it on film, you kind of know what it is. You're like, man, she don't even understand this nigga talking circles around her, and he just got out of asking a hard question about do we have extra kids? Cause he got her questioning why she asking, but he, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Like, and I'm like, damn, that shit really work. Like this nigga really got her in her head now. Like I'm fucked up. For what yeah. they're like, dude, this is this nigga cheating yeah, on me. I don't seen some shit in real life, so I just, man, you know, yeah, I don't, yeah. I don't be understanding it, but I mean, they be letting it happen. That's the thing. I mean, women let let shit happen that really shouldn't be happening. Bro. That's what fuck it up because the thing about happen, it, your so. predecessor let this shit roll. So your predecessor, the woman, you know, the the woman that had him before you, let this shit roll. You get what I'm saying? And so, like, you know how they say niggas got to check niggas? Yeah. Women got to check these women that, you know, be, like, letting these niggas kind of get away with this shit. We got to hold each other accountable. You feel me? Like, we, it's never going to work with us trying to go back and forth with each other. We got to hold each other accountable. And, like, hey, you moving foul, bro. Yeah. Or you, but the thing about it, niggas be ready to call a motherfucker a pick me or a woman a pick me. When you try to say something that's really like of of real goddamn substance, so I just wanted to get on my two cents about that, man. We about to lighten the load, the mode, the, the mood up around this motherfucker a little bit, but um, um, you know, speaking of all this, one of the you know the things I got to shout out, I ain't gonna call this a donkey of the day, a donkey of the week, but this is some light skinned nigga shit, and light skin y'all got to hold this L, bro. The Irv got the situation because this is going to tie until we're going to close it up on our music tip. Um, Don't be emotional is what I just tell you, dog. Like, like the goal of a nigga to say he mad at his side chick for showing up with another <laughs> nigga because he saw her on TV while he at home with his wife. Like, this bitch really got well, nothing. You know, like, man. the goal. Don't be tender, man. <laughs> Like, Whoa. how you mad at your side chick for trying to get another nigga who got this situation <laughs> together? While your wife in the kitchen, bro, you mad. You, can you imagine the scenario, though? Man, like, the thought like, that he been wanting to talk about that for so long, <laughs> like bro. He, hurt. he been wanting to fight. <laughs> Somebody please say something. Just make this a bitch. mention of something. Man. <laughs> he didn't know he talking about country grammar. He talking about country grammar. Like... <laughs> 
fucked up, but that show you like how niggas really like be trying shit. Like <coughs> you can't have wifey expectations for your side chick. Like yeah, you you can't. You bet not dare cheat on me. Even though I'm fucking around, cheating on my wife to fuck with you, but you better not ever cheat on me. That's a crazy fantasy. Man, so I'm going to say this, and this might sound crazy, but even though, even if that ain't your wife, don't be getting mad at the other chick for fucking around and you going out here doing everything that you doing. That's what we do, though. Unfortunately, that's how dumb ass niggas actually up fucking it up for everybody else because... We can't handle what we did, shot. Y'all know this. That's, no, we've said sure. this a million times. The thing about it is, that's why, and I've said it before, that's why women can get away with cheating. Because oh, they're the best cheaters in the world. Because yeah. niggas don't believe that a woman would dare cheat on me. They be, they they go do great at building that. Like you got, like got. <laughs> they build that trust immediately. A woman can come rub you down, like fix your plate. And literally got a whole nigga that's blowing her back out. Come Bro, on, man. you get what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like, have you thinking you got More the best that. wife in the in the world? You get what I'm saying? Like, you shaking your you shaking your feet over here because you didn't bend that nigga. Like, man. <laughs> <laughs> the way this nigga over here shaking his leg like goddamn, bro. Like he been on the side. He so like we've all been the side all been on nigga. That side you know we you like damn. So you been the side nigga, you see a different level of 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 ain't shitness because a woman on her ain't shitness is a different level. Yeah, because they do it so well. Like niggas, we we start fumbling and shit. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. we over explain it. Well, you know, like. Girl, ask you where you going. I'm just going to get some meat. <laughs> I'm really going to get some meat with Marcus because you know we ain't seen each other in like 16 days, and so <laughs> we just decided we need to just go on and link up. I'm like, nigga, what did you shit even ask all that? Like, <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> like, nigga. But now you feeling guilty? Like, nigga, feeling guilty and shit. That's why dudes can't cheat, bro. Like, honestly, and women just allow you to hang yourself. Most of the time, your woman know you didn't cheat it. No, for for sure. way longer than, she, than the shooting fell. She just waiting to get her ducks in a row, whether it be my financially, <laughs> whether it be I just need to make sure I got that burning. When she, when she get to asking them questions. She, she already, already know. know. Yeah. She's allowing yeah. you to hang yourself, bro. Yeah. Like, I'm just going to see what he going to say. Like, she'll <laughs> do some shit like, Saturday, you came home late. I ain't going to say nothing Sunday. I ain't going to say no Monday because you didn't rehearse what you going to say to me. On the way home, but by Tuesday, Wednesday, if I ain't said nothing, you didn't let your guard down. You just forgot the story that you had <laughs> ready for to tell me. <laughs> hey, baby, Saturday, when you was gone, um, when you was, oh, shit, nigga ass started getting tight because he forgot what the law was. <laughs> you, you get what I'm like, saying? Damn, like, was I with? Or was who I, I said I was with? Because you forgot what you told her you was going to do. Yeah. Yep. That's yep. why niggas get caught up because a woman's just retaining this shit. She gonna suck your dick like you the best nugget nigga in the world. She know you ain't shit. She gonna cook for you, do all this shit for you. I've seen it happen to myself. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? Like, and so that's when I knew a woman can take way more than a dude. No, nah, for sure. Because a yeah. nigga find out a nigga didn't fuck this chick. Oh man. We can't keep that shit coy for a week or two and just play cool and go to sleep with you and wake up with you and World War Five, man. I'm hey, some shit about to be set ablaze. You know what I'm saying? It ain't gonna be my shit. But the thing about it is that's now because you didn't thought of everything you didn't did to a chick on the side. Cause you gotta think he don't hold the same value for your woman and your. You know the side nigga don't hold the same value yeah. for your woman as you do. You know what I'm saying? That's the one he put on ignore. You get what I'm saying? Like. He what just, this bitch want? Like he just, he just getting what he gonna get. He going about his right. business. Can you imagine? That's what we start thinking about. Can you imagine the nigga, the, the woman that you about to marry, or the woman that you didn't marry, the war, the mother of your kids, being another nigga? Man, what the fuck this bitch want? Can you imagine that shit? Like that's I, tough. <laughs> that's tough. That's tough, bro. Like this your whole world. This your moon and your stars, bro. But this a nigga who he. It's a nigga somewhere lying to her, and she like, I'm not going home until you answer the phone. I just seen this story. Like, why my side nigga won't answer the phone for me? I'm not going home to my family until he answer the phone. 
I've seen this. I've seen the chick boo who crying in the parking lot because the nigga she want to fuck with won't answer the phone. And her husband is literally calling her, but she putting him on ignore so she can get on the phone with her side dude. I've seen this with my own eyes. Damn. Damn. Nigga. So what does that do to somebody who does not have the wherewithal to think for themselves? It can jade you. Being a side dude can jade you from not trusting women at all. <sighs> He fucking that leather off your bitch. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, like Gilly was saying. Everything she don't want to do with you because she don't want you judging her, she doing with him. <laughs> All the shit she watching on Pornhub and X videos, she trying with that nigga. Yeah, for sure. I had a homeboy of mine, bro. The chick that he was fucking with, she was married. But she wanted to get into the lifestyle. But she had a thing for women. But her husband, she didn't want her husband to look at her differently. So who you think she was having the threesomes with? Mm. Not the nigga paying the bills. Mm. The nigga who just needs to be where he needs to be when she say. So this nigga getting but now home. But women, women do say that, though. Like, they don't want to have threesomes with the person that they love. Exactly. Yeah. So it's a nigga somewhere getting all the benefits. You know, her husband been jacking, his, jacking off and shit. <laughs> For that dream and shit. Yeah, and it's yeah, a nigga yeah. somewhere that don't even answer the phone on the weekdays for. Got your woman face down and smash. You know what I'm saying? He like, like a motherfucker. Like, he she get the whole vision. Blast. <laughs> like, I know it's fucked up to think about. It. But it happens. It happens. Nah, it definitely happens. It happens every weekend. Yeah. So, hey, man, watch, watch your head, fellas. That's all I'm going to say, bro. Um, Before we get out of here, man. You know, I had a uh, scenario I wanted to ask y'all. Um, if a sex tape leaked, what's your first response? If one of your sex tapes leaked, what's your first response? Man. I wonder who it was with. Because <laughs> that's going to tell you a lot about it. Oh, man, that's going to tell me everything I need to know. <laughs> If I was shining or not, you know, you know what, what I'm saying? saying? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, how nasty was this motherfucker? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Like, oh, okay, well, I'm straight. That was a good one. That was a straight over. That was, that was good. We just do two positions. <laughs> she ain't do nothing. You feel me? What about yeah. you? You know what I'm saying? Because that's really in line with me. What, what, what about that, you? That, that's a good one. Because well, I am thinking about that, but I am pe I'm peeping out. I'm looking like Martin when he got beat up. You know, when she's like, <laughs> you can come out now. I'm coming out the side. Because like, you better shine. Yeah. You better shine, bro. Who, who was it with again? They always say, man, the eye in the sky don't lie. Yeah. You feel me, dog? <laughs> like, because yeah. that boy Safari getting clowned on social media. Man, so. <laughs> because so, the women say he wasn't hitting no shit. So it was a full sex tape? I don't know, bro. I just know. <laughs> all I saw was he getting he was getting clowns when a nigga had to say, y'all really think I was on hard in that video? Yeah, yeah. I saw like, it. when a nigga started, hey, leave that, just leave yeah. that tweet. Don't, don't even put it out there, yeah. bro. Because that ain't even helping your case. <laughs> just let it so go. now you say you can't even get hard doing <laughs> sex, bro. You got erectile dysfunction now. <laughs> just let it go. It'll, just it'll, let it go. It'll, it'll pass in a it'll day It'll blow two. over. You get what I'm saying? You got to let that shit blow over. When you start trying to explain your deficiencies and shit, <laughs> see, you know, it was a, that was a third round, you know, y'all don't understand. So, you like, so niggas just filming the third round now, huh? You know, you got to start off strong. If you going to put this shit on film, yeah. we need to put the first round on this bitch. What am I put my third round on that bitch for, you know? So, if I was the first one to come out, the only thing I'm going to ask for is how do I look, man? Was I moisturized? You get what I'm saying? <laughs> was, was the angle right? You know, you know like was the angle right? Was I sweating too hard? Cause you know, if I if I'm fucking after after drinking, I'm drenched. You get what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. So I'm looking like I'm I'm looking like Shaq or Jordan. You feel me? You know, them niggas drinking drinking they sweat. You feel me? <laughs> um, but on some real shit. Um, that's why I, I I'm just like this. I don't really like footage. You know, with the cloud being out there. You know what I'm saying? And then also, kids like to go through phones. You know what I'm saying? Like, kids you know, know how to get know, to shit. You know, it's a hidden photo album. That don't work. That shit don't that work. That don't even work, bro. Like, I mean, it is. It kind of not hidden, but you just hit the yeah. album, hit the album yeah. button, scroll all the way down. Oop. Don't even put no pass. They should at least put a pass. See, that's what on. I'm saying. Yeah. Like, bro, combos explain to my child. They want, they want to play games <laughs> with my shit. Why me and my, my why with me and their mama in the goddamn yeah. like, you know what I'm saying? Figure four. <laughs> <laughs> like. <laughs> I'll explain that shit because kids know I because everybody you gotta you gotta seen, you gotta put the games folder like somewhere <laughs> on down. But everybody two, three pages. seen that kid taking pictures in their phone like this. 
Like, yeah. Yeah, they, get, they, yeah, they go and look at themselves. Because you know when you take the picture, all of like the little picture scroll. Yeah, 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 yeah. So you see, a, what is, like, see your, your child see a nipple. Like, what is this? <laughs> Mama on that bitch spread eagle. Got to explain that shit. That's why, hey, man, let's just go on and use our imagination. I got photographic I got photographic memory. I don't need the footage. I'm going to remember. You know but, what I'm saying? But keep that phone until you pay it off and don't trade it in. So that way you have two phones and you can get him the other one. Hey, the, la- the last time I had shit in my phone, like footage and shit, I lost that one. And to this day, hey, I just got to do a six-month search. You know what I'm saying? Make sure my shit ain't nowhere. Because on some real shit, bro, that still scared me. Yeah. But now, would you rather blow up off of a single? I'm going to ask this question because, you know, we in this microwave society. Would you rather blow up off of a single, a viral single, or, of an, of a, or off of a dope music project? Me, it, uh, it got to be a project. I take, I take the writer's block, like Lauryn Hill, off a of dope project. Than me having going with a <coughs> with a with a solid track, and I gotta reinvent myself like uh dude that sung that song all over my watch go on. Oh, you talking about Trinidad <laughs> Jones? Yeah, yeah, like reinvent myself, like go through that trials and tribulations. So I think I go with a project. What about you? Yeah, I'm gonna say the same project. Okay. Um, I'm just a I'm just a project guy. I mean, I, everything I listen to, I'm gonna listen to the whole tape. See, it's more sustainable. You old school. We owe of a different demographic. It's like now we're in a playlist society. So yeah. people don't really hold a lot of value in a in a project nowadays. I feel like the last project that came out that blew someone up, like out of nowhere, was Summer Walker. When her first uh mixtape came, nobody had even heard about her. And then you just saw it seeing it everywhere. Yeah. For me, the last one that was like that, where like a project blew someone up. Was uh, Joy Badass 1999. It's one of my favorite albums, top five albums in hip hop history. Mm-hmm. But the thing about it is, it's a gift and a curse that comes that way. I look at, I call it the, the Lauren Hill effect, where you come mm-hmm. out with such a strong body of work, there's no way you can replicate it. Yeah. And then the worst thing is when it's that first one or that 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 initial project, that's the one that's the most personal. So you can't chase that again. You can't, you know, you, you, it's like the Illmatic situation or it's like miseducation of Lauren Hill. How do you follow up? Like, that scares me about Nipsey Hussle. Like, what what could he have done to to to, Trump victory, to Trump lap? victory lap? It was like a perfect album for a yeah. lot of people. Yeah. And so... It's one of those effects where I would rather go out with a project, but I see why they push singles. Because, yeah. like, Cardi B ain't dropped an album in four years. But we still hear her. She's still relevant enough yeah. because a single will get her by. Because just, like, just like you say, I mean, we we in a playlist society, so everybody just want to throw what I want to listen to on a playlist. Like, I got, I got a playlist. It's My Ears is the name of the playlist. Mm. And when I think about like some, I play, I'm listening to some. I'm like, oh, I can throw that on the playlist. I might yeah. want to listen to that later. But me, like I say, I'm a, uh, I'm an album guy. Once it hits the playlist, you're not going back to the album it came off of. No, that's the thing. No, and so yeah. that's why a lot of people don't. We get mad when artists don't put a lot into albums now, but they know that you're gonna pick and choose what you want. <clears throat> like you notice, they don't try to roll out singles like that anymore. Like they'll just decide. What what numbers had a, I mean, which music, which uh, songs have the star next to it? They'll kind of let the fans determine yeah, what's like going to be Like which one listen to yeah. it? Let's get the star. Like Roddy Rich the Box was not his single, but that shit went so far. It's like, oh shit, we gotta make a video. Yeah, like it's not packages. It's not it's not packaged the, the way anymore. Like the fan has way more leverage to yeah. d- d- dictate and determine what is going to sell, what's going to be hot. Because we don't understand why somebody like an NBA young boy who doesn't even post on social media is the biggest rapper in the world to teens. But then you have someone that you can see that these record labels are trying to package and it's like they just can't get them to pay yeah. to that's, the audience. That's just because, I mean, that's first because of his content. And then, I mean, he on everything that the, what, the, what the kids look at. 
And, but it, it's like, how many, but think of how many rappers have tried to replicate what he is and they can't <laughs> do it. It's like sometimes you just the chosen one where yeah. it's a lot of, think of how many Meek Mills it was out of Philly. Yeah. Like every, it's every nigga on every corner in Philadelphia can rap. Yeah. But it was like, what made him be the one to make it out of here? Or like, why was it that Fat Joe was the one to make it, but he wasn't the best rapper? Yeah. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's like, it's never, like, ASAP Rock ain't the best rapper in ASAP. Yeah. Ain't even the most talented nigga in ASAP. But he has the biggest star appeal. You can't make it. Like, it's just. It's crazy because I was listening to Ferg the other day. Like, Ferg is really more talented than ASAP. <laughs> yeah, Ferg, Ferg, real nice, feel me? buddy. But ASAP Rocky just has the whole steez. You know, yeah. it's mm-hmm. like, Joey Badass. You know, he wasn't technically the most talented one out of his group yeah. of pro era, but. Or uh, it's Method Man, the Method Man effect. You listen to Joey Badass last tape? Yeah. This real, most recent one? But it's the thing about it, it's I will never have the same appreciation for a Joey Badass pro- project as I will 1999 because I remember how I came across it. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm getting up in the morning, getting ready for work, MTV Jams come on, I see the video hard knock and it feel like some 90s shit, but it's a young nigga rapping. I'm like, yeah. what the mm-hmm. fuck is this? <laughs> I'm like, so now I gotta go do my Googles come across this project and I'm like what the fuck is this that's the that's my favorite type of you know thing to come across a project and it just blow my socks off but now it's like like this little baby album that's coming out I'm scared for him because my turn was so perfect it was such a dope album it had so many hits off of there he's like what can you do to follow up with this dog and I don't want an artist that I'm a fan of to kind of like not be able to live up to the hype especially when there's been a long wait Cause people don't wait anymore for music. Oh uh, no! Nah. So well, if you why? make us wait, this shit better be a goddamn exceptional. You get what I'm saying? Because if not, the fervor. That's why everybody was shitting on Drake so much. Oh uh, yeah. Because people to this day feel like Drake ain't gave us our, gave us a classic. Yet. Like we feel you like. Think so? I'm talking. I'm you like about a body. body Drake of has very good albums, but does he have his illmatic? Uh, Does he have his reasonable doubt or his or the one with uh, don't think about too you? But it's not a consensus. Oh, you, somebody you else gotta, to say another. You got to think most artists at that that realm they have a consensus. Like you know, Us, Usher Confessions is Usher's one. Yeah, yeah. You know, your reasonable doubt is Jay Z's. You get what I'm saying? Carter, uh, you know, Carter three, three is is, is Wayne. that's that's Wayne's victory lap for you know it's yeah, like I, I'm with you. Drake don't have the one that's consistently for everybody the one. But he can put a playlist and kill everybody. But you know he has it in him. It's just the thing yeah. about it. I feel like Drake is one of them people who gets who gets bored while he's creating the project because he's always on the go. So it's like oh shit, I'm locked in. Da da da. Then I get something else that distract me. So let me finish this shit up. Get this shit out. And so we can, you know, because y'all gonna fuck with it. Yeah. I can breathe on the bit and this get gonna fucking stop all the music. I'm gonna make the return regardless. So why would I need to kill myself, not shaving, not living, trying to lock myself in this room to create a great project? But I think also with Drake too, Drake is so big that even though uh, us, our, our generation of people, in this area of the world, didn't like it. It's some a group of people somebody's gonna get that's it. our size or bigger that does like Drake He's music and that, that shit playing right now. Yep. I ain't gonna lie, when <laughs> niggas was, so niggas was hating on their last album, but bro, I ain't gonna lie, hearing that shit in the right setting make that uh, shit, man, that shit hard in the cool. right like, setting. I didn't want, cause riding around like why the fuck am I listening to this shit riding around? <laughs> but like you at you see some shit, you overlooking the city or some shit. Yeah. You know, the, the the optics is looking real nice around you. You got on your sheen shirt, you, you know you, what I'm you saying? You feeling good, you smelling good. That shit hit different. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, oh, yeah. this is what this nigga was when he made this shit. Like, yep. it would probably hit way different if I was in Mykonos right now. You get what I'm saying? Like, yeah. oh, you know, so I understand it, but a lot of thing is when somebody becomes so rich and wealthy, it kind of like, I'm, I'm giving y'all the soundtrack to my life. Yep. Hopefully y'all can gather, you know, can gather around and get something out of it. But yeah. it's just like Jay Z telling us about Basquiat on the wall and shit like that. You can't grasp, you know, having a six million dollar, you know, picture on your wall. But yeah. that's the thing. So I don't know. 
you know, I just feel as though it's hard being an artist in so many ways. It's hard being an entertainer, period, yeah. man. So the expectations are crazy. What do you, like, why you think about <clears throat> body of work? What do you think about game? Like, where? I ain't listen to it. I, I fuck with game. But, it's like the game, he lie too much. <laughs> well, no, I was going to ask, like, the body, like. I can't he, listen to him he, rap he because he lie too much. <laughs> like, you know when nigga lie so much, you just don't want to hear shit that he <laughs> got to say <laughs> man, musically or in the interview? I ain't never heard a dude just tell the truth about game, but I think you are right. He just. Bro, everybody that game fuck with say he lie. Man, that nigga ain't high with now. How many times you heard somebody say, well, game told me that, that, that. It ain't high with now. <laughs> like, everybody could, is everybody lying on you or are you the lie? Like, when yeah. Jimmy Iovine walked past this nigga and didn't uh-huh. even acknowledge him after all the shit games hit, ow, ow, they was trying to put everything, the, 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 the whole thing on my back. You know, Interscope, they was trying to have me save it. Like, nigga, that nigga ain't even acknowledge you. So who, yeah. like, game is big, thinks he's bigger than he really is because he came up under icons. Yeah. You know, he had the Drake look. He had the Eminem look. He had the game can, look. Can, game can rap, man. Game can rap his ass off, but you yeah. not a, you, you not a pillar. Yeah. I think he thinks he's a pillar because he was the only nigga holding down the West at one point in time. Well, so he made him. He made him feel like he was one of the that, They gave him that Interscope. He probably the last. He gave him that Interscope package before they gave Kendrick. Like, but you, but he you, had all the producers. Anybody yeah. wanted. That's uh, that you, you. That's all fine and dandy. But a big thing is he was filling the void. He was LeBron for the NBA when Jordan went away. Yeah, you got to think the West Coast hadn't had didn't have shit. Yeah, it was the South and the East Coast, and then you had just hearing about this nigga game. Compton. Who the fuck is this nigga game? Who was game? You know, then this old nigga come up with the scowl, you know, looking like every gang banger that you ever knew in California. It was like, oh, that's game. First strike was he was on Love Connection. But, but we didn't know that when he came. Yeah. You know, that's when we start finding yeah. out that he was a stripper. The nigga used to have a butterfly under the LA and shit. But when we came out, we were like, oh, this nigga the hardest nigga out of the West. You know, yeah. that's how he came off. And so that's why he get he got that special pass because he had no competition. Who was your competition to be the one from the West? Yeah. So that's why everybody like gravitated to someone like a Nipsey B because it was an organic, you know, like, oh, that's an organic West Coast nigga, not a nigga who's trying to prove to the outside world what a West Coast nigga is. You know how it'd be a nigga like that live in, say you're a dude from Chicago or LA or New Orleans. You you know when they from cities with a reputation, they go yeah. somewhere outside of that, so they try to play right. up to like, nigga, I'm from the shy. You know where I'm from Magnolia. You yeah. like nigga, you go to private school in New Orleans, but because you ain't got damn Milwaukee, where well, you feel like them niggas don't know that ain't got ain't got shit shaking, you gonna be like the nigga that's the hardest nigga out of New Orleans. Yeah. You, you get what I'm saying? I feel like that was game, man. Yeah, but no, uh, I, I understand what you're saying. Um and it caused, I think it caused you not to listen to his music. He, uh, yeah. See, I, I still, I, I'm, I mean, I'm not one to get all into people's. Uh, if you this or if you ain't, I'm just here to enjoy the music. I don't know you anyway. I'm a so visual person. Care per- less I'm, about what you're doing. See, I'm a visual person <laughs> because the thing about it, I look at it like this. I'm gonna go off your album first, off yeah. your music first, but. You only can get notches against yourself as you do shit that I just don't agree with over consistently. Like, like I don't like bitch made shit, so I don't like when niggas kiss and tell. Or I don't like when niggas try yeah. to you know make motherfuckers you know tell private shit. That's one of the biggest ways to like turn me off. Yeah, as a, as a fan, because and he's done that on multiple occasions. Yeah, you know what I'm saying, and he's just habitually lied. Like he said he wrote. 50 cents how to rock. Nigga, you wasn't even around it. You get what I'm saying? Like, or uh, the story of how he told a story. It's like, it's just like, I'm like, bro, you could have told that shit regularly and we would have fucked with it. But now you, I, you know, I'm riding, I'm riding through, through, through Slauson with the thing on my lap to in case anybody needed. You know what I'm saying? You know, <laughs> like, bro, all you had to do was say, I like to ride through the hood sometimes, see what's going on. And then now we don't feel like, bro, you're doing too much. You know how a nigga tell you, like, bro, so you ride red, red to blow any nigga head off. He's like, bro, you could have had that same scenario, but you ain't got to put all that in there like it's Grand Theft Auto. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? Like, so I see three Crips at the fucking, at the light. One of them got the long, he looked like an Egyptian. 
<laughs> you know, just comes out to be Nipsey. You know, I'm ready to blow it. I'm ready to pull the tool on him when he walk up. I'm like, bro, all this shit went on at one goddamn red light. <laughs> <laughs> you get what I'm saying? And, like, and none of you put but it. But you like, gotta understand where he's from too, so that's why he felt the need to tell the story that way. We know though. We like you want to ride through the hood of your Range Rover because you got you that nigga, so you want to see the biddies. You but feel you me? Got, you got, he he got to give you the full picture though. Yeah. See, you like, could have got other, other, other people that ain't never been to L.A. or been to Compton or uh, all that. He, they they got, he got to paint the total picture so you completely understand. Kevin Gates like that too. <laughs> Uh, like Gates. Kevin Gates is that like that too for me. Oh, nigga. Gates boy, nigga, Kevin Gates really hard, bro. But his music, like nigga, you ain't do no goddamn battery with your hands, bro. <laughs> why you fucking your son, your cousin acting like that shit cool? It's like bro. why you want to spin the bitch booty, bro? Like like little dumb shit. Like like goddamn, yeah, bro. Why you have these feathers in your head? Yeah. Why do you have this bow tie on with this white shirt and these tight ass pants, bro? Like I why? forgot. I forgot what he said about the feathers. See, it was some but bullshit. He, but, he did, but, he did, it, but he did break it down to why he wears he, the felt. My though. mom has Navajo in her, and, you know, I found out. So the spirits, the gods are with me. <laughs> yeah, it is. <laughs> some shit like that, bro, man. Just say you like how I look. And be leave it alone, bro. You got good hair. You got your shit in the bun. You want the accessory, bro. You ain't got to. <laughs> damn, nigga. You know what I'm saying? Like, nigga just doing a lot. Yeah. Bro. You know what I'm saying? I ain't. I ain't, ain't going to not listen to you, but it's like, bro, I ain't really believing this shit. It's like the freaky Zeke when he was on the couch. I took the nigga chain like that. <laughs> <laughs> like, nigga, you did all that. I caught it. <laughs> like, you did all that, bro. Hey, you know what? <laughs> Cam them used to be on this shit for real, for real, bro. Them setting them all they albums used to be on this shit. So he, is, he probably, he's like, man, I see why you was a nigga they let do skits. Because, <laughs> <laughs> you know, Freaky Ziggy, that was his only role to do the skits. <laughs> right. And I see now, because this nigga, y'all rolling up and shit, he tell you, man, I was with this bitch. You know, you know, they talk hard. I was with this bitch. Hold on, I heard a nigga come up the fire escape, dude, in the fucking cape, bro. It was like, bro, that shit happened on New Jack City, nigga. Like, <laughs> like we remember that scene, nigga, don't. <laughs> Like, don't be telling us the goddamn, like, you be like, no, hold up, nigga. That shit sound real familiar. You know what I'm saying? Right, like, <laughs> but no, nah, man, shit, man. One five, man. want to appreciate you coming to fuck with us, man. Man, no yeah. doubt, man. Y'all know I'm going to pull up anytime, man. Nah, I feel like we got most of our topics off, but it was like, shit, I just felt like, man, I just had some shit on my heart, bro. Like, like I know I, I got on a lot of niggas' asses today. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? I just be hear, seeing man. shit, bro. I'm, I'm, be, I'm, be, yeah. I'm getting gray hairs, bro. I'm just the nigga. We gotta hold our niggas accountable. We gotta tell our niggas to hold. We gotta hold them accountable and tell them keep their third eye open. Yeah, hey, bro, if your nigga doing whole shit, bro, you the only, you know, you do, you the only goddamn, you know, thing in between him and some fuck ups, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like, just know that, man. But yeah. hey, if the nigga doing right, you still gotta keep the third eye open because you still gotta watch. <laughs> <laughs> Man, all I'm gonna say is, bro, just go on, watch, watch, watch what's in front of you, bro, and enjoy your, enjoy and, it, and, and just enjoy, enjoy it, your man. moments. Cause shit, you go yourself crazy trying to figure it out. But man, so. dog, uh, episode one seventeen, man. Uh, oh, dude, yeah, one seventeen. But man, I got a final thought, man. Like, uh, we all play sports, man. Like, uh, how far is how far is too far, and how, how how far should you go as a fan, a coach, a player in any any game? Oh, you talk about the uh, keep to leave situation. Yeah, yeah, like man, don't live, don't try to live vicariously through your kid, man. You can't want it more than your kid, you know, in anything. And I feel a lot of times, uh, people forget what the the, the main goal is when we deal with like little leagues and like kids and coaching kids because we feel as though we we are in a competition with with each other. You know, a lot of times them kids going to the same schools, they just want to interact, man, and just want to be a part of something. But we kind of jaded, you know. I know, you know, one five, you you know, you got to coach and interact. So yeah, man, that's a that. um, that's a a very sad situation. Um. That particular situation. I mean, as a as a parent, um, like I said, I coach, man. I've I've coached kids, young kids. I currently coach um college kids, North Lake College, uh junior college, Urban, Texas. 
Uh, we are the Blazers. We are also the um, 2022 uh, NJCAA uh, National Champions. Stop talking your shit. <clears throat> um, so I, I just had to let that mean down. Right already. Quick. Shit. They um, reigning champs in junior yeah, yeah, college yeah. level. National. National champions. reigning champs. Yeah. Um, Got to put the national in there. Um, <laughs> I will be back this season, so I need everybody to come out and support. Absolutely. Um, it's, it's a very unique opportunity. Um, at that college, um, it's Division Three. I need to throw that in there as well. Um, I know some people are like Division Three. Yeah, Division Three. Nick, um, if you playing <clears throat> post high school, you did something. Yeah, yeah you achieving, sure. man. Yeah, we we got somebody. He at uh Alcorn State. Um, I got somebody else at Wachita Baptist in Arkansas. Um, I got somebody else going to uh Sagu. Um, I believe that's in uh Wash. Uh, damn, I forgot the name. That that fast. But even though, uh, hey, 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 your, but, your Bruce, I mean, you're, it's paying off. Yeah, man, appreciate it. You know, I'm, shit. yeah, they, we, we move, we, we getting kids in, we moving them out. Um, so, that's, that's the most important thing. But going back to, uh, what we was talking about, like I said, that's a very sad situation, man. As a parent, um, I had to have a conversation with some of my parents before, and you know, just watching parent, people in the stands. Um, I know you, you want your son daughter, uh, niece, nephew, uh, grandson, granddaughter, wherever they are to you, you want them to do great. You want the game to be fun and fair. <clears throat> but when it comes to, um, like, referees, for instance, they're, they people, man. They, they get that. They, they just like you and me, they people. They make mistakes. You make mistakes. Um, they not going to call every call um, the right way. Um, and it's, it's, it's certain things about being a referee that you don't understand. Like I was a referee for probably a month. Um, I'm, I'm cool on that. <laughs> Cause people <laughs> that talk part of basketball. Hell, bro. <laughs> yeah. Cause people really talk to and you like. I know like with me, I know the game cause I played basketball all my life. So I didn't really go to any training. I, I probably went to like one or two training sessions Yeah. to be a referee. And so as I did that, I, you know, referee some JV games. I referee some, like, some ninth grade freshman games, um, some little kid games. And I'm uh, so I'm, I'm going to explain this real quick. Yeah. When you're a referee, on one side of the court, you're going to be on the baseline. Yeah. On the other side of the court, you're going to be at the top by half court. Okay. So on – different sides of the ball, I'm getting two different views of the game. Yeah. Right? So just because I'm calling calls on this end of the, of the court, I might not call that same call on that end because I'm not in that area. Right. So I'm not looking at that area. But they don't understand but, right. that's why they're inconsistent. Exactly. So they, so, they don't, so they don't understand that. And, like, if the referees, if they get on the same page, then it'll be a good game. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But if they kind of on two different pages and they one of them like, well, I'm going to call this, and the other one like, well, I don't, I don't really think that's what that, that's a foul. I'm going to do my own thing on this end. Then it's, the game going to be looking kind of funny. <clears throat> and you're going to be yelling at one referee, and the other referee just going to kind of be running up and down the court. Yeah. like <laughs> You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and that one referee going to be catching the blue. And that's that's the part. Because now, based on how you handling me, now the temper is starting to exactly. Yep. Raise, right? exactly. Because it's, it, it, during that month, it was a game I was calling, and this man was sitting on the, on the first row. His son was playing. Every time he drove to the basket, he was yelling, that's a foul. That's a foul. And after a while, like, you know, I ain't worried about you yelling. Yeah. But after a while, I took my whistle out of my mouth as I was running back down the court, and I was like, no, it's not. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? And then one time I heard him. He was like, "Hey, Rev, you might well blow that whistle. Take that whistle out your mouth. You ain't gonna use it." I spit my whistle out of my mouth and start running them down the court. <laughs> so I'm I'm an asshole. <laughs> so if you want to get out there and talk to me, okay, cool. <laughs> but it's 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 when you get to you want to physically fight somebody. That's where I be like, bro. Like yeah. everybody think they try going pro. It's not that serious. And so they think the stakes are higher. Yeah, it's not that serious. I never understood. Like, I used to go to my brother's AAU games, dog. 
And AAU a different monster. Oh, uh, yeah. I hate going to AAU games now. Because AAU is like, that's where you get your name. That's where yeah. they, So they feel like you stopping my kid from getting a scholarship. And also on that note, you stopping your kid, they, them stopping your kid from getting a scholarship, you over there acting a fool, that's stopping your kid from getting a scholarship. Because you now the coach like, I don't want to deal with that. Yeah. Because oh, I've been on, I'm, I'm on that side now. I go recruit. Yeah. And I go sit in the gyms and I go watch games. Yeah, we watch the kids on the on the court, but if it's a parent over there acting a fool, we don't want them. Ah, uh, whose son is that? I mean, who who mom is that? Yeah, who 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 dad is that? Well, but they don't even uh, realize that's, that's it. number such and such parents. Oh, okay, cool. Scratch them off because it's not worth it. Yeah, because because then you doing that at this game to that referee or that coach. Yeah, when I recruit him and he come to my school, you are gonna be doing it at, at my games too. And it's not enough to like, like, equ- like so that's why it's like you look at what's the best situation overall. It's not like who yeah. is the more exceptional yeah. player it, sometimes. This, this ain't about you. This, this is about your child on that field or court. Man, and that's why, it's, man, first of all, our condolences go out to the Y'all, family facts. of the victim, man. Most definitely. And, yeah. and man. Both families because, unfortunately, condolences. like, there's they're, they're going to be so many impacted lives. But the, the person I'm most – Afraid of is, is the son, you yeah. know, to be able to have to see, yeah. you know, your father go down in that way. And I feel it. I hope this doesn't impact and impede his love for the game or just for a take away his innocence. Right. Because now it's like that's the memory that's ingrained when it when you think of that place, that sport, that game. Yeah. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's like. That took away your your father. Nah, for real. Yeah, that young so, man got a lot of living. And yeah, man, I hope the people around him and and his um his community put their arms around him and give him the counsel and the mental uh you know help that he's gonna need going forward, man. I think that's another thing we don't pay more attention to is just like the long the long lasting issues that come when we have situations that occur like that, man. Yeah. Man, you know, just you know, y'all be more steadfast and you know, think, think, think more critically, you know, in situations, you know. Man, just watch the game, like it's, <clears throat> it's, yeah, it's gonna game. all fold out, like it unfold, like like it's supposed to, like. Right. I mean, it, as a coach, I'm like, man, listen, I'm coaching. I'm gonna handle the referee. Let me talk to the referee. You yelling out there at the referee and saying all this stuff to the referee and to the coaches and it's not gonna change. The it's not changing nothing. Right. You know what I'm saying? It's never been a time in history where a player, coach, <clears throat> a fan was talking to the referee or yelling at the referee, and he was like, you know what? My bad. I'm going to change that call for you. Yeah. That's never, ever happened. If it has, send me the video because I want to see it. Right. It ain't worth it. it, it that's never going to happen. You know what I'm saying? Whatever you yelling at that coach about, that's not going to help your child's situation. <laughs> So just just come enjoy the game, and live, let's move on to the next day. You know what I'm saying? And like I say, as a coach, we don't we don't want that in our stand. Right. You know what I'm saying? So let's 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 cut that out, man. Yeah. yeah for we, our, for, our, for our kids. Let's be better. Not for, not for yeah. each. I mean, for each other, but more importantly, for our kids, man. That's yeah. that's, that's what it's about. It's it's, it's about the kids. It's, that's what it's about, man. We don't lose the focus on that, you know. Like it's just too much stupidity going on. Let's let's cease that, man. Uh, yeah. Thank you, everybody, again for rocking with us as long as y'all have. You know, appreciate you, you one five for putting no, up yeah, on. What episode man. is this again? One seventeen. One seventeen. We've been off the porch man. a while, man. Yeah. Going yeah. back, just like yeah. what I like to do sometimes, go back and look at our old episodes. Sometimes, yeah. like when we was in the closet. Yeah. Feel me. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We recording in the closet, bro. What's this number three for me? Yeah, bro. Yeah. It's like yeah. shit. That's why I say when we like to bring back old faces, you know, so to see the evolution. You feel me? So, uh, again, man, we got we got merch coming for y'all. You know, I just submitted the designs, <clears throat> so you know we 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 got that in the, in the, in the pipeline. Oh, I got my uh, shirt by the way. Bro. Appreciate. it. Already, man. You know, I got the fake yeah. little face shirts coming out, man. I gotta Already. do my shoot. Once I get the shooting this in the web, you know, in, in the site put up together, I'm gonna roll those out, man. <coughs> your boy trying to start making some clothes. When you start realizing you bag, ain't got the shit you wanna wear in your closet, you just like let me make my own. So man, you know, we're just gonna keep achieving, man. This 
Your boy Antoine, the source. Man, it's knowledge, man. You going to get us out here on the intro? Outro? We out. <laughs> man, your knowledge. Shout out to our brethren. Yeah. Flemming Ratchet. Happy, Happy birthday. birthday, my boy. Happy birthday, yeah. brother. Deep boy, good luck. Uh, okay. Uh, yeah.